Cosmo. How do you like me now? Hey, Tara, did you see it? I totally nailed that lip side kick flip. Oh, brother Cosmo, we have important things to talk about. Let me guess. Biodiversity? That's right, but something else too. Good stewardship. Good stewardship? What's that? Hi, I'm Nate McKelvey, and I'm an environmental educator. Today we're talking about biodiversity, the first step in being a good steward. We are going to go out and compare the biodiversity between these native meadows to the biodiversity in a mowed grass area. So your hula hoops are going to help us to identify a specific area. We're going to count the species. A great example of a biodiverse habitat is a meadow. Biodiversity is the variety of living things in an area. Each animal and each plant and each insect rely on each other to survive. Everything in nature is interconnected. In an ecosystem, all these elements function together. An ecosystem is a complex system made up of living organisms and non-living resources that function in a harmonious way. Abiotic elements are non-living elements, such as soil, air, water, and sunlight. Biotic are living organisms, such as plants and animals. To be a good steward, we need to understand the complexity of all these natural systems. And understanding the complexity is the first step in being better stewards of our natural resources. What are you doing, Cosmo? I'm building a stewardship. Oh, Cosmo. No, it's a good stewardship. Cosmo, stewardship isn't a thing. It isn't. It's a thing you do. There are lots of ways you can be a good steward. Good stewardship starts with understanding and appreciating nature. Here we have a great example of a very biodiverse section of the meadow. Even in just this one small area, we can count at least 10 different species. With hundreds of species of flowers and grass, meadows serve as natural sponges. Rainwater and runoff filters through a meadow before it reaches a stream, which is a really important ecosystem function. Did you know that there are 1.7 million known species on Earth? And we are only one. A biologically diverse ecosystem begins with the plants. The wide variety of grasses, wildflowers, attracts different insects, and a wide variety of different birds. Here we're looking at a classic mowed section of grass. We've only found two or three different types of species. Although this may look nice to humans, it really can't support an ecosystem. This lack of biodiversity is what we call a monoculture. If you like having lots of choices, be a good steward. It's important that everyone cares about the environment because it affects the food we eat, the energy we use, and the water that we drink. Did you know that there are five main threats to biodiversity? They're habitat degradation or loss, non-native invasive species, pollution, global climate change, and unsustainable use of resources. A native plant has adapted to an area over a long period of time. Invasive exotic species are one of the challenges to managing a meadow as wildlife habitat. This plant is multiflora rose. Given time, it could cover the entire meadow, making the meadow much less diverse. As a meadow manager, one of my jobs is to try to keep this thing out. An invasive species is an animal, plant, or disease that is not native to the area. One such species is the brown marmorated stink bug. Just in the last two years, it's caused tens of millions of dollars of damage to crops in Pennsylvania. Whether we realize it or not, human beings are part of the natural system. We're making an impact on our ecosystem with our daily choices on how we use our resources. Did you know the average American uses up to a 100-foot-tall Douglas fir tree in paper and wood products each year? Good stewardship is the practice of using only the resources that you need and preserving resources for future generations. Now what are you doing, Cosmo? I'm planting oak trees, so I have plenty of acorns this winter. Well, you should plant some other native plants too, like black cherry and butternut and American crab apple. Oh, and how about a flowering dogwood? I love the vibes from a flowering dogwood. Yum. Variety is the spice of life. There's a close relationship between a lot of flowering plants and pollinators. The plants rely on the pollinators to spread their genes and reproduce, whereas the pollinators get food from the plants in the form of nectar. We're here in a native plant nursery, and what's so special about this place is that every plant here is native to Pennsylvania. 
The function of plants is to feed insects and in turn insects pollinate our crops and our other plants and our trees and our forests and our meadows. When the caterpillar is first beginning to grow, it takes and curls up a little tiny piece of a leaf like this and it makes a sleeping bag during the daytime and it stays there until this evening when it will come out again and start munching. Biodiversity. Becoming a good steward of our natural resources starts with education. If we don't understand the interconnectedness of all these natural systems, we can easily throw off the natural balance. Whoa! Remember, good stewardship takes practice. Yeah, like my awesome lip side kickflip. So think about the food you eat, the water you use, and the energy you consume. So there'll be plenty of resources for all of us. See you next time on Cosmos World!